because I, I have a brother-in-law who's a pastor at a Lutheran church and he was brought before the woman bishop and was told not to preach out of the Bible, but to preach their doctrine. Um, wow. He's still going to preach out of the Bible <laughs> where the Lord has led him. But, you know, um, so th this is how I'm seeing, seeing this um being played out if we're, we're going to see how it how it reflects on where we're living um right now i uh, because i think it's it was judgment on the churches wasn't it i mean it was on the god's people right god's people i mean i I think the parallels to Adventism are pretty amazing. I mean, we talked about last week how, you know, Ezekiel was given in chapter three a, a roll to eat, a scroll, mm -hmm. and then it was sweet in his mouth and bitter in his belly, and he, mm -hmm. he had to prophesy to the people. And in Revelation 10, you know, John is given a roll, it's sweet in his mouth, it's bitter in his belly, and he's told to prophesy again. And then the very next thing that happens is a warning that Babylon is coming and is going to wipe you out. Yep. That's what's happening in four. That's, okay. I think the same warning comes to, to us today that, that we're so stiff hearted and stiff necked and we can't hear his words anymore that he has to do object lessons and Babylon is coming and they're going to wipe us out. <laughs> now it is one to take the actual days um, as literal days that he act, enacted this? I, I don't know how else to take it. That's what I was thinking because this is a fulfillment of um, what God had told them that I'm going to make you as unyielding and hardened mm. as they are. I'll make your forehead like the hottest stone, hotter than flint. And this had to take clearly determination and persistence on uh, Ezekiel's part to enact this. Yes. And they couldn't, you know, I'm curious where he laid himself. Um, yeah, I thought it was curious. right in front of the, where he was portraying everything. Yeah. Which was where? Must have been somewhere in public, I imagine. Yeah. That people could see. Now, yeah, and if he's in, if he's already in captivity, if he is, my sense is he would have gone probably before um, a synagogue um, or mm -hmm. a public market where they're. You, you couldn't miss it, you know. It was like a billboard, yes, flashing before you. Mm. And, and, with, and with the parallels between what's happening with Ezekiel and what happens with with Adventism in Revelation ten, you know that's why I'm one of the reasons why I'm convicted that of this idea that that the prophetic periods that are calculated according to each day for a year have a repetition in our time in literal days. Mm. When God has a faithful witness, they're called the 144,000, who he can use to be his witnesses to his people. Mm. Who, are, who are cooperating with the true high priest who actually bears the iniquities. Almost like he who has ears, let them hear, which was the chapter before. And I, I, I picked up on what Jim was saying. So maybe they had to act it out so that they would have eyes to see yes. what was happening. And it's interesting that he uses, he tells them to use an iron pan. Um, it's that verse, uh, two or three, yep. verse three, an iron pan. 
and which which of the kingdoms is depicted by iron? Rome. 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 So who's going to come and and see besiege and and wipe us out? Rome. Mm. Mm -hmm. And who besieged and wiped out um, um, Jerusalem? Ultimately, Rome. Uh, yes. Ultimately, Rome. Yeah. I, mean, I, I find it the destruction that Christ had talked about of after it was rebuilt by Nehemiah and Ezra. Yeah. The captives. Well, you're looking at the toes, right? Clay and iron. Mm -hmm. Clay and yeah. iron. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Very brittle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, because right. Yeah. And and to that point, kind of going back to Daniel there, uh, too, something that's that brittle will break apart easily, and the gospel with its strength will readily break apart evil. Mm. I like that. It's the example of the stone smashing it and it just being carried away in the wind. Yeah, yeah. That's the, uh, the mountain of truth. Rose into the mountain of truth. It's, it's interesting that we're thinking this is hard and brittle. A couple of the commentaries say this is this is a soft pile. This is something where you can draw on because he's drawing the city of Jerusalem on it. And yeah. they're talking about the iron as a barrier between God and uh, Israel. The people that can't be broken. And so that once this siege starts, you can forget it. There's no no coming back to God for them. Wow. Probably to draw this clay, getting literal here, had to be soft, but sitting out there in the sun for a couple of days would harden quickly. Okay. Or if you fire it. Or you fire it. And the city was going to be burned with fire, though it doesn't yeah. explicitly talk about that here. But. This is my own interpretation of the uh, various forms of wheat, barley, beans, lentils, millet, and spelt. He was put them in a storage jar. And I know we're not to hoard, store up food and things like that. I think that's an extreme thing, yeah. but I think the, the idea of planning ahead um, and having certain foods available storage uh, for um, difficult times. Um, I, I just wonder if, he, if this speaks to that in some respect. Well, I think when you store it, it's, the storing is to be <clears throat> preserved for those that are being brought into your house. Right. Yeah. I mean, right. as you know, so lentils, you're going to be able to store that wheat I have wheat that hasn't been ground, that's been stored, um, barley, beans, navy beans. Yeah. I mean, yeah. uh, you, you can get a bag of navy beans for about a buck 50, and that goes a long way. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> goes a mm -hmm. long way. <laughs> and um, I, I'm not that familiar with spelt, but I am familiar with millet. All of those are... Um, Seeds, of, or not seeds, but grains, grains, which have longevity. Yes. And, and on a symbolic level, speak about the longevity of um, the um, enactment that he is about to undertake. And he, he's, he's to portion it out as well, how much he's to eat. And when he's to eat this as well. Yes. I, I found it kind of interesting that there was six. Yep. Six yeah. grain. Yes. <clears throat> one, of the, one of the commentators just says that um, in times of scarcity, what they usually did was is they took the finer grains and added some of the coarser to it to expand it so that you know, the taste level went down, but you lasted longer because you didn't have the, the, all of the good stuff at once. Mm. Ah. Mm. Now, I see it as a real spiritual 
aspect too that sure. you know, especially in this time when the 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 time periods are repeating in literal days god you know, he tells them to make bread out of it yeah. and what's bread a symbol of the the word of god the word yeah that, that god is going to provide for and feed his faithful people yeah. with his with his word as they're bearing the iniquity of the unfaithful and and they're also being witnesses and prophesying again it's kind of a interesting thing here that on the one hand he's going to be tied up with ropes so he can't turn from side to side and then on the other hand how's he going to make this bread <laughs> <laughs> it certainly wasn't an all day all night thing was it Dean? yeah he probably was loosened to make his bread huh yes yeah there's a dual thing to that too i i see as as being tied um was his his tongue was tied right right you know until he could speak until the lord wanted to speak actually I usually ask the Lord to do that for me, too. Right. Yeah, that's in chapter 3, <laughs> verse 26. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so he, he's, not, he's not doing a lot of talking. <clears throat> Isn't it by our example we will show who we are? Yeah, your actions certainly speak about your inner thoughts and your motives. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were if you were happen to be going into the market and you saw Ezekiel doing this, you saw him weighing out, you know, twenty shekels, and he was so precise, let's say, and um, eating at certain times. You'd want to ask him a question, wouldn't you? What are you doing, oh, yeah. Ezekiel? Yeah. Hey. Uh, stay as far away from the idiot as you can. <laughs> You'd be curious as all as as can be. I remember in Lawrence many many years ago, when I, before I even knew Christ. I remember this guy walking down Essex Street. He was in um, burlap. He um, had ashes all over his head, and he was walking up and down the street with his burlap bag, and he was full of ashes. Huh. Being a prophet, huh? Yeah, he wasn't saying anything, though. He, he wasn't yeah. he was very, very silent. But just his image was very stark. It was, you know, you, you, you couldn't, you could not avoid looking at him. It was different. It was bizarre, as Dan says. Wow. I, I think that's perhaps the whole point here, is that God wants them to inquire, what are you doing? Right. Yeah. <clears throat> well, what I found was interesting as well is had he used human dung, would the message have been even more to the point? You know what I mean? I mean, God said, okay, well, I'll, I'll you know, you have, you have, you have cow dung. So, you know, it kind of, I don't know, it made me wonder, okay, well, why, why did God want him to use human excrement for the fuel? I mean, because, I mean, he comes back and he says, oh, look, oh, Lord, God, you know, I have never defiled myself from my youth till now, you know? Yeah. Well, you, when you look at the siege of Jerusalem, though, as you read on in, Ezekiel, you'll see they were eating each other. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, they were eating each other. It was that bad. As uh, wow. as been pointed out, the iron pan, this seed, oh. they, they were completely surrounded. Wow. The idea of having a sixth, only drinking a sixth hen, hen of water, as it says here, probably speaks to you know, that water was going to be in short supply, even though there was the Gihon Spring there. 
And, and they were so hard hearted. If he actually made it with, with human dung, they probably would have been thinking of themselves as so much more righteous than him. <laughs> Ooh. Right. <laughs> Uh, he, he's defiled and we're so clean and pure <laughs> my mercy I, I just find it very bold that um, Ezekiel did, did say to the, his lord you know no no please <laughs> yeah. well, it's, it's kind of like Peter when he said to uh to uh, you know, kill and eat when the the sheet came down from heaven, and Peter's like, I, I've never eaten anything unclean. Yeah. <laughs> well, that I think speaks to. Um, I mean, we, we got to remember that the priests um, are um, they're defiled um, in Jerusalem. The whole sanctuary system has been turned upside down, mm. um, as you know. We read on further about going in the north wall, you know, digging in, looking what's going on in the inner sanctuary, and you know the killing of the twenty-five priests that have their backs turned to the sanctuary, turning to the east. That um, they they were very very defiled, but it speaks to I think his righteous character. He would not allow, he would not go along with that. I also find it interesting in uh, verses 16 and 17, um, at least in the King James, it talks about them, you know, them eating the bread with care and drinking the water with astonishment. And that word astonishment is a form of the word shaman. And then in verse 17, it says that they will be astonied one with another and consume away for their iniquity. And that word astonied is, is the exact word shamem. And that's the, that, that word is first used in Leviticus 26 with the seven times and the desolation that would come as a consequence of breaking corporate covenant relationship. Uh, <clears throat> It's really like God pointing back. Want a drink of my water here, Craig? <laughs> I had to drink some. Good grief. I swallowed the wrong way. <clears throat> oh, my. So, yeah, he's really pointing them back to Leviticus 26. Right. And, and uh, the covenant relationship that's been broken. And the word there, the phrase cut off, um, you know, you think of... <clears throat> Isaiah, he was cut off out of the land of the living, who shall declare his generation. But also um, the idea of um, here of um, my, my thoughts are slipping for me. I'll cut off the supply of the food in Jerusalem. That there would be no visions. There would be no prophecy. There would be no one to provide word from above. They would be cut off from spiritual food. Okay. And of course, in Daniel chapter 9, the 70 weeks are cut off for Daniel's people. And then the Messiah would be cut off in the midst of the covenant confirmation week. And then Jerusalem was ultimately destroyed by Rome because they rejected him. When you get back to the uh, cow dung versus human waste, one of the comments here that I'm reading is just saying that, you know, the animals would have been the first thing that they ate up. Right. So there would be no cow dung or anything else uh, other than human waste to have a fire with. <clears throat> then, well, which when, makes sense when Jim said that they were eating each other. I mean, I've read Ezekiel. I just know ah. Well, right. But I mean, they still got to, hopefully they were at least cooking it. <laughs> oh my so when Ezekiel said I've never eaten anything abominable and God said I'm giving you cow dung instead of human waste he must have had some animals left unless he just produced it well, he, he, produced it. 
What? I was just saying he produced mana pretty easily. Yeah, yeah. He didn't make this easy for Ezekiel, did he? No. We think about Jeremiah and how difficult time he had. And Isaiah. Mm -hmm. All the prophets, really. Yeah, really. I was going to yeah. say, and Daniel, and, and John. I mean, just witnessing all that, what was to come. And I mean, he, he learned the horrors of the coming siege. I mean, he, he knew what was coming. And, and, and we too yeah. know the horrors and the thieves that is coming upon us as well. Sister White as well. She oh. uh, hit in the face with a rock, suffered her whole life for that. Yeah. <clears throat> and her, her health. I, I don't think it's really possible to really be in harmony with God to be able to be his spokesperson without suffering. So Jesus said. <clears throat> identify with the suffering servant. Yeah. You can understand why uh, Jesus in his um, rebuke to the Pharisees and the woes, he said, you whitewash the sepulchres of the prophets here they're trying to cover over their guilt and we'll see later in ezekiel uh i don't know 12 13 14 where ezekiel is to condemn the prophets of that time saying you know what's being said is not true we'll have peace good tidings are going to be happening and what have you and um how the prophets um you know at jesus's time and clearly even here at Ezekiel's time, would want to kind of sugar, um, sweeten up um, um, the, the message from God. Mm -hmm. Peace, peace, and sudden destruction. Right. See that, you know, he's that he's having to measure out the, the bread and the water, you know, is symbolic about the, the, the real famine for the word that they're going to have because right. they've hardened their hearts so much. And <clears throat> even the, the human dung that he originally told them to use kind of shows how they've defiled the word of God through their hard hardness and refusing to listen and understand. Yeah, yeah, that human dung was used to bake the bread, the bread of life. Mm. The um, phrase there, um, the drinking of water at set times. I think of Daniel when I hear the word set times. He thinks to change the times. And here, I wonder, the idea of all this coordinated way of eating and, and the set times that there was going to be a set time in which Jerusalem was going to be uh, taken captive and completely destroyed. Does God still have set times today? <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, the anxiety that they all have because the supply will be cut off right in Jerusalem so so they're going to eat what they have right what they have there and, and drink what they have there and it kind of reminds me of where they are spiritually because God tells us be anxious for nothing right not even where your food or your drink will come from but this is this is what happens when he isn't with you. You know, he, he leads you up to what you have chosen. Yeah, and then 
that it continues, they may be dismayed with one another and waste away because of their iniquity. And it and isn't it towards the end, right? The, just it's almost like the attacks of um, who was it that was standing and blowing horns and cracking their jars and the enemy that was down below, they Gideon. started killing each other. Gideon. Gideon, thank you. Mm -hmm. One thing too we need to remember that it's not everybody. You've got Daniel and his four friends who um, are God's emissaries. Is that the word to put it? Are, are God's <laughs> chosen people in this siege, and uh, they don't they don't waste away. They thrive because of their faithfulness. And so it, it, it does show to us, too, that um, the, the woe is me, needs to, I feel, needs to get past and look to God to say, hey, you've got a people out there that um, are faithful to you. Show them to me and help me be one of them, if that makes any kind of sense whatsoever. I don't know. Amen. Which, which is why we're not anxious, right? We're not, we're not anxious. And I think, Bill, Dan, what this does, though, um, you know, you only know the future by the, by the past, right? And so you, you, you gain discernment from this um, to understand which path to avoid. And this, and this is you know, clearly pointing to the past because he's laying the, the past years of iniquity currently on Ezekiel in days. Mm -hmm. Which is really pointing them to focus on, on what happened in the past and how they got to where they are. Yeah, yeah it, it's so, so important that, um, that they're made aware of that, that it really speaks to God being just in it. And they brought this upon their own heads. And, uh, as Pastor Tim would always be looking for the, the kingdom dynamics. Uh, it, you know, as I shared before, both, both the 390 years and the 40 years of iniquity, both began with the building of a golden calf. Mm -hmm. and in, in both instances it was really rejecting God as king to rule over them that's, right. that's what led them to build the golden calf in both instances mm. and you see it you know in in uh, in the 40 years situation they refused to go up into the mount which was a symbol of the kingdom right and in the case of the northern kingdom in Jeroboam, he sets up the counterfeit Feast of Tabernacles, which is all about the kingship. One thing here, that it's off topic a little bit, of what we haven't mentioned is during all of um, these messages from God to Ezekiel, um, how do you call it? He, he talks back to God. He makes a complaint or a request and says, hey, Human waste to, for fuel, um, that's not something I've ever done. And so then God relents partway because my understanding is using any kind of waste was unlawful or however you want to call it. But yet God says, okay, I can reason with you. I can, mm -hmm. I can understand your, your, your part and maybe I can move a little because of your choice. I think he's always shown that he's he's a reasonable God and he will listen to what we're asking of him. He's not he's not I mean he he stands by his word but he sees what our needs are too and he he takes our feelings our those things into account not our feelings but but in this case, you know, when, when Ezekiel says to him, really, 
And God says, okay, you know, I hear what you're saying. That's a, that's a giving Lord. I think Ezekiel might have been the forerunner, the inventor of the portable Coleman stove. <laughs> Stone cans. Stone cans. I remember when they cooked bread, you know, they, they had these clay stoves. And so they put the fuel in the bottom and it would heat up the yeah. top. It isn't like, you know, and I don't oh, know goodness. if this is the case for okay. Ezekiel. So it isn't like, you know, you got the coals of the dung, you know, right there on, on the bread. That's yeah. what I was seeing in my head. <laughs> no. Uh, no. I'm relieved. Oh, man. <laughs> you can eat the bread now, Cynthia. Yeah, I'm willing. <laughs> I, think, I think we're all going back to our anal phase here. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> well, you have to also look that there's, there's no leaven in that bread that he's making. Oh, well, that's so true. That's true. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. and it, and it's, it's actually a very healthy bread. Yes. Like they're, they're in captivity in Babylon, and yet somehow they have all these different types of healthy grains available to them to make bread. Well, remember, you know, to eat this bread, he wasn't talking, so he had to exercise his muscles and everything. So, you know, like I said before, one slice of bread probably took him an hour or two to eat. My. This is pretty long bread. Definitely My wife bread. loved this type of bread, these hearty breads, you know? Not like the ones I grew up with, the Wonder Bread. You know? Oh, right. You oh. kind of ball them up, make a little snowball with them. And we did, them. didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Turn them back into dough. And use the plastic that they came in to put inside your booth. At least that's what we did. I, we oh, did yeah. the same thing. We didn't do that. We did the same thing. I didn't know to do that. <laughs> no, I didn't either. I got you know how old those two are. Actually, <laughs> see, when I was at camp meeting, uh, this past camp meeting, and uh, with what Brian and uh, Craig didn't know is um, my socks were wet from the day before. If you guys remember, it rained like cats and dogs. And mm. so what I did was I in the motel, I went into the garbage. And then you know how they leave extra bags underneath? Yeah. And I put these plastic bags on, over my... Uh, <laughs> Over your my feet, feet so, so, my, so I wouldn't be so uh, wet. <laughs> Great idea. Oh, we yeah. used to do that because, I, my, you know, my mom was a widow at 36 with seven kids, and you never got new anything. You just yeah. grew into the next ones, and um, those plastic bags were a lifesaver in the winter because you'd have your socks that were darned, you know, and hopefully mm -hmm. warm, but it was uh, that protection from you know, getting wet. And yeah, yeah, they're... Yeah. Which had done that. Yeah. I've outlived those years. Let's go on. <laughs> <laughs> the memory's there. We're, huh? just, we're just looking what we're going to be doing in the future, you know? We're going to be <laughs> using what we got. Right. That's why they yeah, call it Wonder Bread. <laughs> but the bags are going to be so much different that they're not going to be any use. Oh, well, dear, so yeah. you're not going to get any plastic bags in Vermont. As long as, long as we don't wonder after the beast. <laughs> right. Oh, that's a good one. Wonder bread, wonder after the beef. <laughs> wonder after the bread. Mm. I think it's really interesting how, even as God's announcing to them here, how they're going to be just totally, you know, Jerusalem's going to be totally destroyed and wiped out, and there's really no way to avoid it. At the same time, he's sort of he's he's pointing them to the solution in that he has a faithful priest who he's appointing to bear their iniquity. And and to that end, um, I was thinking earlier there when he says, "Turn your face towards the siege of Jerusalem, with bared arm, prophesy against her." They had to think about Solomon's prayer. If we turn to Jerusalem and acknowledge and humble ourselves of our sin, 
you know, I will forgive you. And it goes on and on and on. Right. Um, that you <clears throat> look towards Jerusalem, just like Daniel each day would look towards Jerusalem, symbolically, the, the place where um, there was salvation in the sanctuary. And there, there was that promise that Solomon prayed, um, that God accepted that prayer hold you with the right hand of my righteousness mm. you know it sounds like they're you know or we've made it sound like they're basically condemned but you have to think that there are young people and people that um are just coming to the knowledge of god mm -hmm. And these, these, to that point, Brian, I wonder, remember they allied themselves with um, Egypt. Um, Pharaoh Necho, is that Necho, and Pharaoh all the and humanism Egypt. and isms, and, and, and God is tearing them away from the king of the south. Um, mm -hmm. To an ecclesiastically religious, even though it's a pagan kingdom, it is a kingdom based on um, even even though it's pagan, it's seeking a, a god. Even though it's you know right. a foreign, based in, yeah, based in mysticism, right? Right. Yeah. This mysterious, these mysterious gods that you need these elaborate uh, um, priests to um, convey the truths about him to you, because while well, you're you're too foolish to really understand. I think we get that in Christianity right mm -hmm. now, too. But it's interesting, you know, earlier, Cynthia, you mentioned um, um, judgment. Or maybe I'm inserting my, my words in, into your, what you had said about how, you know, God is reasonable and he mm -hmm. hears our requests. And I guess I was thinking that, you know, this is this is a judgment of God, isn't it? This is a judgment. He is he has judged that um, this is this will be a sort of remedy for some of the people. Does that make sense? That they will see the horror in what they've done to themselves by following. Um, philosophies that do not lead to their God. I think you're right, Brian. One of the things is, is hopefully, our, you know, hopefully we see that God's judgment is righteous. It's what we have done that causes the judgment, not because he's arbitrary and says, oh, this one will die, this one will die, this one will die, this one will live. It's because of how those individuals have seeing every opportunity or choice that he has given them for life. And, and, and there was a, um, a good outcome, uh, Brian, because we look at Ezra and Nehemiah, and we know what Ezra did, and we know how, you know, marriages, the Sabbath day, and I know they became pharisaical in that way, but, you know, the Feast of Tabernacles, all of the... Um, things that were basically desecrated, desolated, uh, we see in Nehemiah and Ezra um, in the return to Jerusalem, that seed that has been... Um, right, that came out of that bad situation. Came right. out of that bad situation. As, yes, as God, through his Ezekiel. providence... Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. As they, God, they, through his, as God yes. through his providence, brings us through difficulties, not yeah. because he's punishing us, but because he, he, he knows that that's the, that may be the last way or the only way that um, we are going to learn our lessons, right? We smoke three packs a day and somehow, you know, all of a sudden we wake up one morning where we can't breathe. <laughs> You know, it's a natural consequence of our action, but he's trying to bring us to a point where um, we'll learn our lesson. Go ahead, Jim. Oh, I forgot what I was going to say. 
and, and uh, but we know that there was a savior, a type of a savior um, with King Cyrus. He was a savior. He was a type of Christ. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Remember what he did. He paid for the way for them to go. He set them free to go back to Jerusalem. He was a type of Christ. He conquered uh -huh. Babylon. <laughs> yeah. To, to set them free. <laughs> yeah. Of course, Darius was a type of Christ as well, wasn't he? Was it Darius that Jer Jeremiah uh, prophesied about? It yeah. was Isaiah prophesied about Cyrus 200 years before. C C Cyrus was Darius's general. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then he became king himself when Darius died. Right. You you see that I think in Isaiah 44, where the Lord speaks about his shepherd to come and he names yeah. him. His name will be yeah. Cyrus. Yeah. In fact, I think Darius would sort of be like a type of the father there, and yeah. Cyrus is a type of the son. Yeah. With, with, with uh, the, you know, the judgment and the, you know, teaching them the lesson, in both cases, for, for both prophetic periods that are being, you know, discussed here in this chapter, they both began with building a golden calf. Idolatry. Just outright idolatry. And as you've said, Craig, this will be repeated, and we know it begins... In the house of God, because yes. we see later on here, when the when the chariot is leaving, when the cloud is leaving, going through the eastern gate, yes, such has taken place, and it starts with the twenty five priests who have their backs turned toward the sanctuary and turned towards the sun. Yes, they've taken out, and everybody in everybody who has been. Who is mourning what has happened to the sanctuary? The angel in linen goes out and puts a mark on their head and yep. told not to hurt any of them who are mourning for the isolation of, of God's temple. It's also really interesting, as uh, Pastor Tim noted when I was sharing about this last month, and I, which I hadn't thought of at all. But when you add together 390 and 40, you get 430 years. And where else do we find 430 years? It was from the time God called Abram out of Babylon, out of the Ur of the Chaldees, until he delivers them from bondage in Egypt. It was 430 years, exactly. <laughs> and all those typologies also apply. It's really quite amazing. I should have paid attention in math class. Yeah. Math is, that, is the, math yeah. is the foundation of science. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. It's actually the foundation of music as well. Oh, definitely. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 And it's interesting, too. In, in 400 years, which was the time that they were, you know, really supposed to be in captivity, though you added on the 30 years as well at the beginning, in 400 years, there's exactly 144,000 days. Wow. Wow. I have I have a question on on a seven. What was the purpose of his arms to be uncovered? Well, doesn't it talk in other paces about the arm of the Lord being revealed? The strong arm of God's judgment. Yes. Strong arm of God's judgment being revealed against them. Okay. Maybe. But it also says, and you shall prophesy against it. What is yeah. the it? What's he yeah. referring to? Is he referring to the arm? It would, it would seem so. No, I think they prophesy against Jerusalem. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it being Jerusalem. With that. Semicolon in there, of course, no right. pronunciation in the original, but. And this idea of prophesying again, you know, it doesn't, for, in what you have in Revelation 10 as the parallel, 
it doesn't say prophesy something new or something else. It says prophesy again. And, and what had the Millerite Adventists prophesied? They preached the prophetic periods. That, that was the heart of the Millerite message was the prophetic periods. According to the year day principle, each day for a year. And now he says you've got to prophesy again. And it involves sharing the same exact prophetic periods, but now they're going to be in literal days. Because there's going to be the faithful witness connected with them. Well, it just makes sense, too, as well as um, Ellen White saying that the message will come back with power, right? The message they are, had already heard, yes. but this time it will be with acceptance. I'm, I'm kind of like paraphrasing it, yes. um, right? So it's the same mm -hmm. message yes. going out to the people, but this time it will be with power. Yes. And why is that? Why is that? Well, see, I, I think it's at least in part because these prophetic periods that we preached as, as Advent and our interpretation as Adventists of the prophetic periods at the beginning of, of the Advent movement, are, are, that interpretation is vindicated when the prophetic periods repeat and follow the same typology that happened in years, but now that same typology is repeating, or the pattern is repeating in days instead of years. And it, it gives power to the original message because it vindicates the original message. <laughs> well, but isn't it given power also because of the latter rain? Oh, absolutely. See, that to me would be the vindication would yeah. be that it's the the message is is manifested through God's people even though there were a lot of people that were faithful back in in the late 1800s early 1900s i think that god is calling a truly faithful people that will take that power that he gives them that they plead for and he gives them and they are the true witnesses in that respect Amen. As the apostles were when, you know, the tongues of fire yes. were put upon them and then they went out. Yes. By yes. the power of the Holy Spirit, right? And those, those that were searching at that time, because there's going to be a searching because there's a shaking going on and, 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 and people are asking questions. And, um, and it, it, it's going to be received. And I, and I think about how God said, well, I think it's got, I mean, maybe mixing up with Ellen White, but um, it, it said that they will be quickened at that time. Are they quickened because it's the latter part of the day as those that were going into the vineyard to, to, to work for the Lord? Or are the people receiving it quickened as well? I don't know. Well, I think the, quick, the quickening means to bring to life. And there okay. has to be a, a bringing to life because they're having a death experience, a death to self experience. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the Holy Spirit did not pour out in the early reign at Pentecost until they personally experienced the cross. Uh -huh. And we can't have that latter reign experience right. until we have a personal cross experience ourselves. Mm -hmm. When getting back to your point, Sue, about the arm, when I think about the arm, I think about um, the king extending his scepter, mm -hmm. um, Esther. I think of, um, though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, thy rod and thy staff protect me. Mm -hmm. and the pleasure of the Lord will prosper in his hand, it says in Isaiah. So the the it's symbolic of a king uh symbol and, and it kind of is a fulfillment earlier too of his head would be like stone and hotter than flint it, it gave him this perseverance and he is a christ-like figure and as as a savior in his uh, in his in his in this um type but he's also as we've been talking about making judgment and 
you know, the, 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 the king makes judgment with his scepter and, and his, and his oh, feet. Yeah. And <clears throat> that's, uh, that's Isaiah 53. So, who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Right. Yeah. Oh. Right. That's, that's okay. the suffering servant, the cross experience. And also, by the way, in verse 11 of Isaiah 53, it says that he will bear our iniquities for us. Right. Just like Ezekiel is commanded to bear their iniquities for them as a priest. It pleased the Lord to bruise him, to make him to grieve when his soul will be made an offering for sin. Then he shall see his seed and his day shall be prolonged. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Mm -hmm. Isaiah. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. Also, you know, the right arm is the right arm, again, of his power. And his, the scepter is a scepter of power. All symbols of the source of our power and our strength and our overcoming. Yes. Although he's laying on his right side, so it's his right it's his left arm that's being exposed. Well, that depends whether he was laying at the time of the four hundred and or the three hundred ninety days or the four hundred or the thirty forty days. Well, yeah. Well, it's it's yeah. the, the the arm being revealed here is is a is a testimony against them. Right. Yeah. And, and the the left is a side of disfavor. Okay. Is this the symbol of the woes? A woe? Wow. Seems like a pretty good big woe to me, the destruction yeah. of the, the holy city. <laughs> mm. Yeah, and people wasting away. By the, by the way, that, that Isaiah 53 passage is quoted in John chapter 12 right after the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And then Jesus foretells his death, and then it talks about, in verse 38, you know, that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed their report, to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? You know, I'm, I, was, I was looking at uh, Isaiah 59, um, 16, and the title of it is The Blotting Out of Israel's Sin. Then the Lord saw, it and it dis displeased him, that there was no justice. He saw that there was, there no, was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his own arm brought salvation for him, mm. and mm. his own righteousness, it sustained him. Amen. <clears throat> Yeah, I tell you, when you look at those little words. Absolutely. Yeah. And we know, you know, um, the, the food being cut off, um, you know, the spiritual food. Ellen White, um, I think it was from either 1850 to 55 or 1860 to 65. I can't remember where. Basically, for five years, she had no visions. She had no, um, no, no messages from God because the people around her, basically, wow. were um, um, mm. rejecting it. And so the Lord basically wow. shut shut up uh, her visions. You I think know, it was the fifty to fifty five. Fifty to fifty five. Wow. Okay, so the civil war. Yeah. Huh? yeah. So for five wow. years, the. Um, the the journal i forget the journal the name of the journal but um they would not publish or anything like that and everything dried up yeah yeah i think she said around 1850 that that the the council and rebuke of laodicea was upon the people of, of that you know applied to the people of that time mm -hmm. that they had by 1850 we had transitioned from from Philadelphia to Laodicea. You know, it's interesting. It's interesting when it does say there, the Lord said, in this way, people of Israel will eat defiled food among the nations where I will drive them. But we know Daniel, Azariah, Mishael, and Hannah, Hananiah did not eat defiled food. 
No, they did not. Right. That's right. It's interesting also, too, that in, in 1 Kings chapter 12, where it talks about Jeroboam setting up the golden calves in the counterfeit Feast of Tabernacles, which starts the 390 years, the very, that's at the end of 1 Kings chapter 12. And then the very beginning of 1 Kings chapter 13 is when the man of God comes and prophesies against the altar and the prophecy of Josiah is made. And Josiah is the, is the type of the Advent movement, which was at, you know, which was at the end of the, the seven times prophecy that I've been sharing. And it's also the, uh, you know, also points to Revelation chapter 10 and the experience at that time of prophesying again. Or needing to prophesy again. Because Josiah was really that last effort of God to reach them with a with reformation, <clears throat> but they didn't follow through. Mm. He goes out and he fights the battle that he the Lord told him not to fight with Pharaoh Necho. He gets killed early. You know, God, God had told Josiah that he would die in peace. Mm as an old man, but then he goes and fights a battle the Lord didn't send him to fight against Pharaoh Necho. So God had actually sent Pharaoh Necho against, against uh, Babylon or Assyria. To, and they, they were supposed to be fighting each other and it wasn't a battle for God's people. And I think, you know, the, there's parallels to the Advent movement. The Advent movement was supposed to end in peace, but it sort of got an early death because they went out to fight battles that the Lord didn't really send them to fight against Egypt, secularism. This whole, this whole notion of being driven to a foreign nation and captivity and their culture and their foods, I, I'd like to think that um, there is a health message here that is... Um, being provided by Ezekiel as they go into captivity and um, to, to um, be able to, you know, eat as God had provided for them in a way that was very healthy and starting, he did the foundation, but um, Walter Veit's um, most recent number 75, he started talking about the foundations of the health message in the next number of series from 76 on is going to be about the health message. Wow. Yes. <clears throat> well, that's, that's interesting with the connection to Josiah. Josiah reigned for 31 years. And if you take from when William Miller started publicly preaching in 1832, it's exactly 31 years to 1863, which was the year the church was officially founded. And it was the year she had her first health vision. Mm. Uh -huh. When they had gone into captivity again and they needed a health message to get them through their captivity <laughs> and it, it, that just all the pre-industrial era and you know all the butcher shops in chicago and all the mm. stuff that uh, you know was going on for the you know lower class people eating hot dogs that they didn't know what was in them you know and yeah uh, it, that that um, it was a timely message, I guess. Yes. Oh my. Uh, uh, makes me think I'm. There's a, a town fair here in Maine, in Topsham, Maine, where oh, yeah. the church I've been going to this all this week, and we have a booth where we're giving out literature. Please keep us in prayer. And uh, I I went to set up yesterday and today, and. You know, it's just all the food you'll see at a fair. The, mm -hmm. you know, the clams and the lobster and the, the ribs and the cotton candy. And, um, you know, I, 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 the first thing I thought, oh, all the anti-COVID food. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just such <laughs> poor quality food. Right, right. There's no change at all. 
in the middle, you know, of a pandemic. No connection at all in the minds of the people that what they eat affects their health. Well, yeah. yeah. As, as you well know. Well, they don't know. The, 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 the propaganda on food and the commercial and all of that has really influenced and really um, impacted uh, individuals as, yeah. as far as their choice. And it's a uh, it's, uh, it's been a lot of propaganda in that area. Oh. And the yeah, most unhealthy heard... food is subsidized by the government. Right. Hmm. Yeah, that's the way the merchants make their money, right? Yeah. All manner of indulgence. Yeah. Yeah, and they, they're selling alcohol, and there's, mm. there's ho horse races, and they're gambling. I mean, it's just, it's a den of oh, thieves. They'll, they'll be marrying, giving in marriage, yes. all up until that day. <laughs> wow. uh, praise oh, God, I've already had what? divine appointments setting up and giving away literature already, so praise God. Amen. Um, I just have one question, because I'm just rereading what we, what we just went through. So 390 days were put aside for Israel and then only 40 days was put aside for Judah? Yes. Okay, all right, so let me make sure that I'm reading it right. Yeah. And the, way, the way I connected the 40 days back to the 40 years in the wilderness, even though that wasn't just Judah, that was all 12 tribes in the wilderness, but they had the sanctuary, they had the ministry of the Levites, um, and the tri it, it was the southern kingdom, Judah, that maintained the temple and the ministry of the Levites and the Ark of the Covenant, and all those things that in the wilderness, uh, Judah was like the remnant of, of the 12 tribes who had the truth. We had the oracles of God. Um, I, I also see it because I'm just looking at this as well. This may not make sense, but how I think in, in pictures that when the plagues fall and when they fell earlier, um, we know that all of them did fall on Israel. Right. Um, right? It, it, it was limited. And when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking of all of this is going to happen. Um, but it's going to be limited. Um, for those that are following Christ in the end times, you know that because there's judgment that's happening here. But I don't think if, uh, Judah gets the full onslaught of, I'm going to say punishment because that's the only one that comes to mind. Um, uh, just the disparity in days, you know what I mean? The affliction in days that they all re receive the punishment, but um, Judah not the Not the fullness of the punishment. The 40 like was, was added on to the 309. Yeah, it's, it's a total. What, what you're saying, you know, the, the faithful have to suffer with the unfaithful. Right, exactly. <clears throat> Just like Caleb and, jo Caleb and Joshua had to wait 40 years to go into the promised land. Right. Yes, yes, yes. So that's, that's what I'm just getting from there that, you know, we will like we're not we're not going to be um, beamed up, you know, before <laughs> before this tribulation happens and everything else in it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that it will cut short for the saints that are left here on earth. And it, you understand what I'm saying? It wouldn't be the full. 
full onslaught. That's not that it wasn't going to affect them. Just like right. it didn't affect all of them then. Well, Christ, Does that make sense? Yeah, well, Christ talked about that in Matthew 24. The days yeah. will be short. It doesn't mean the intensity of the violence and the aggression will be any less, yeah. but the period in which that will exist. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But that's yeah. not for a select few. That's for everyone, correct? Right? Yes. We don't know. Well, okay, yeah. Well, it's just like the persecution, you know, of the Dark Ages was shortened with the Reformation. And, yeah. uh It didn't really, the persecution didn't fully last the whole 1260 years. Right. Yes. And that was because of God's people. Yes. His, his, the truths that were starting to come out were tempering um, the effects of um, the incorrect teachings, yes. right? So, so God's truths were being manifested in people's lives and, and words. And so um, it was God's people and his spirit working through his people that were manifesting God's character. It was the truth. So whenever I whenever I hear the word punishment, yeah, my hair goes my hair goes up on the back of my neck. I know that's why I said I'm using this word, but not my intent, only because I can't think of the right one. So I love this, I love this quote from James. And I know there's more, but this is the only one I have right here. It's James 1, verse 15. And it's, um, when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Yeah. God does not bring forth death. Right. Sin brings forth death or punishment right. Right. or whatever other adjective you want to put on it. Right, right. Yeah, we're on the Amen. same wavelength there. God, Thank God, you. God also used or allowed the disharmony in Satan's kingdom to to protect the saints at times. Um, mm -hmm. For instance, the uh, the the attacks of the uh, the Mahatmatans, the Muslims, at the southern border of the of the Roman Empire often turn the papal's attention away from wiping out the Protestants to where they had to defend their territory. And then also at, at the end of the 1260 years with the French Revolution, when the, the, the spirit of, of Sodom and Egypt rose up, they actually turned their persecution against the priests who had been ruling so unjustly. And, and again, Believers were in some ways protected by that. Yeah. You know, a lot of them were protected also because they had been either crucified or burned at the stake or banished to other countries. Yes, that's right. You know, to, to your point, Sue, I mean, yes, there'll be physical violence. Um, um, and we look at that and, you know, the shedding of life blood and what have you but i i see the violence that christ talks about of deceit and deception as harmful as physically um, um detrimental to an individual as physical harm and he, yeah. he, he talks so much about deceit you know do not be deceived and and the violence, I see there as a violence on the thoughts of an individual. Um, and and, 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 and that, that, that it's a very coercive, it's a very violent act. No different than the violent act of, um, you know, I'm not going to get into vaccines, but the violent act of a government telling you, you must do X. And yeah. is that in, is that in, um, um, uh, what I want to say is that is is that coincide with your beliefs or does it not coincide with your beliefs? The violence of of um, of deceit, the violence that is perpetrated in propaganda um, mm -hmm. is as um, 
is as bloody as 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 physical um, harm. I totally I totally agree with where you're coming from because the battle is for the mind. Right. Totally. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The deception will draw people into this idea that it's okay to hurt others to force them into an ideology right right which are satan's methods they're not god's methods and and unfortunately lots of people are going to be drawn into that so yeah i i can't agree with you more that it's yep. th those deceptions um that are going to draw people into um um, damaging their character so that they're not fit for God's kingdom. Yeah. You already you see that mindset being uh, inculcated right now around health and the vaccination and all that. Yeah. And then, then they'll just turn it to spiritual issues. That's right. Well, well, I you know I I had gotten a a text from a former student wanting to just have my point of view on something. And as I, as I read what she had, had, had written to me, um, the first thing that, that came up on me was um, what will be portrayed to her um, if, if she didn't get vaccinated, you know, that um, she would be uh, considered selfish and... Um, Other mean things. Well, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, what I want to bring her back to was, okay, so you don't want to make a decision based on the feelings of others because others have their choice, right? Yeah. And we respect yeah. the decisions of others, but you shouldn't make your decision on, based on how other people are going exactly. to be towards you, right? Right. right. Then, <laughs> then I, you know, I had brought her into, you know, God says, come, let us reason. So this is where he wants you to reason. You know, for right. for your for yourself, because he says I'm not I'm not getting a you know a yes or a no from God, but God sometimes doesn't give me a yes or no. He wants us to reason within our own minds, you know, based on what, based on the evidence. So, you know, whatever my decision is, it is mine, yeah. and you can't base your decision that you're going to make on what I have or haven't chosen. Right. Um, because you want to lead them back to 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 the front, the frontal lobe, to to you know look for themselves. Be what, what does the Bible say? Be convicted in your own mind. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, and I said, you know, I, um, you know, I hope uh, that helps you. And whatever decision that you make, know that I I love you. And I, I, I will not judge you whatever choice that you make because that's yours. And God calls us not to do that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just, just make sure that when you're making the decision that you're using your, your mind and you're not using your feelings or right. Um, right. In, in that right. aspect. Right. And um, the, the issue is I, I thought, whether, the issue is in whether you get the vaccine or don't get the vaccine. It's that's right. To, have you reason? Have you? Are you making the choice? That's exactly. real critical. It isn't about anything about, it could be about almost anything, but are you making the choice? Yes. yes. Realizing that you have that choice. Yes. Yes. And whatever which one it is, that's the choice that you have made. And, 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 and you shouldn't, you know, just as you don't want to base it, use it against others, because that's what happens. You know, they call you selfish, you know, in, in the same way, aren't they selfish? because they want you to have it. So they don't, you know, so it's, oh, it, it's the dynamics in that whole thing. Um, so, you know, yeah. young people that have, have not been used to like using their frontal lobe and just going by feelings. It, it, it's a difficult thing. That's like they're waking yeah, up a little bit. That's the underlying message um, that, that is, um, I think paramount is yeah. one has the ability to choose and God, will not allow will not allow the ability of the will to be um, taken away from an individual amen unless he amen. gives it or she gives it over and yeah that was my point 
you know, again, and, um, you know, just praise God, Lord. I pray that as, as she's in this point of her life, Heavenly Father, that as she's searching out, um, that, that, that she would draw nearer to you yeah. during this time. Someone yeah. recently, Someone recently said to me, and this is, I'm not making any judgment on the decision to or not to, but strings are attached to everything. Yeah. And the money that the government has put out to individuals, as well as to the conference, there's strings attached to that, just like there's strings attached to everything right now in terms of um, the coercion of the will. Um, there's, there's strings attached to everything at this point in time, and we can't sometimes see them. Um, they're, they're veiled, but they're there. Everything has something attached. Nothing is as it seems. That's right. Uh -huh. Just like to right. add one thing to all that, and that is, is, you know, none of us really have the ability or the wherewithal to um, sometimes to make these decisions because we just don't have all the facts. We, we, we're being hurried into making decisions um, without, you know, not feeling comfortable. And sometimes I think what we need to do is we just need to look at the methods that are being used mm -hmm. and, and say, okay, well, are these Christ's methods? Are these the methods of God's kingdom or are they the methods of the enemy? And, and that, I mean, it's fairly clear that if, your the powers or those that desire to you you to do something are using lies if they're using coercion if they're using bribery if they're using force or threats of force mm -hmm. then you can be fairly sure that it's not of god it but if they're, just, if they're if they're putting forth the facts in a loving manner and allowing you to make your own decision, you can be fairly sure that those that, that that's coming from God. You've just and described uh, King Sennacherib. Sennacherib? Sennacherib. Yeah. You just yeah. described him, did you not? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. S Sister Sue shared with me a few other days, I don't know if she did with other people, but uh, an article by Dr. Tim Jennings on his Come and Reason website about COVID, where he goes through that exact thing that you, you said, brother, where he goes, he doesn't address for or against or the science for or against the vaccine at all. He just goes through the methods that are using to promote it and to, to, and to enforce it. And, and he, he, it's, it was an excellent, it was really well done the way he, he presented it. Amen. Amen. When you think about it, just the science of evolution is coercion, survival of the fittest. Mm. That's I call coercion. it evolution. Uh, yeah, that's coercion. Evolution. <laughs> Devolution, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting, well, though, if we, if we take care of the, this, this equipment that God gave us, we will be fit to endure. I think what you're saying, Brian, that it doesn't matter what everybody else is doing. If we're following God's will, what we perceive as God's will will be okay. Let them yep. do whatever they want to do. Yep. Yeah. Who, who is it that leads this? Who is it that leads the scapegoat into the wilderness? It's the fit man. A fit man. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And who's a fit man or fit woman? Yeah. I'm not. One who's, who's those, overcome those whose dependency self. is on Christ. On Christ. Mm. Yeah. One who knows who's leading. Could we could we yeah. use um could we use the word worthy? Who is the worthy man? None was found worthy. Mm -hmm. The one that we decide that we can fall on our face in front of. 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. To he, does, he does say he will divide the spoils with the strong. I will give him a portion with the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong. Hmm. The individual, that's Isaiah, the individual who will, um, you know, at all, yeah. in all ways, um, give his and yield his will over to the creator. Amen. 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 With Amen. that, shall we have a word of prayer to close this fantastic meeting, or do we go on <laughs> until eternity? <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> James? Close, okay. Please. Yes. Gracious Father in heaven, um, the thoughts um, that we have um, shared, um, we pray that they are anointed from on high, that you have uh, led us, Lord, um, in the um, sharing with each other and the uplifting and, and encouragement and the giving of hope. And uh, mostly, Lord, um, through your Holy Spirit, um, um, just relying on the word Help us, Father, to store this up in our heart, in our mind, in our memory, that we will um, um, always uh, rely on the word as our, um, not as our defense, but as our hope, mm -hmm. as um, a way of life. So just bless us um, as we think about these things throughout the week. And thank you so much for adorning us with the Holy Spirit, your such a good father, and we praise your name. Amen.